a little humble family. Hi, Heather. Hello, oh, Heather. Hi, hello, hello, hello. How are you? How are you? Hello, David. Hello, David. Hello, David. You're muted, Heather. Oh, there we go. Ah, yeah. ah that's it. Naomi! So, so beautiful. Hi, Naomi. So beautiful to see everyone as we get ready to start the Havdalah itself. Separating Shabbat and the week, but also bringing all the blessings of Shabbat. Especially this Shabbat that we took out three Torahs in synagogue. And the Chodesh of Adar, we blessed the, celebrated the beginning of the special month. Lots of joy. And we're almost a year. But when things close down, God willing, we shouldn't make it a year and things should open up again. Amen. Yeah. Okay. If you have the Tamim and the candle, take it out. We're not going to start. Hine yel Yeshua si Eftar Pala Yevkot Ki Yazi Vizimras Yav Adoyna Yevayili Vishua Ushiyafte mayim besasai nami maynei ha-yeshua Vadai inoi ha-yeshua wa-alamcha Birchasecha Sehela Adinai Tevai Simanu Mitzgabanu Yaka Sehela Adinai Tevai Sasha Yadam Baiteyah Vach Adinai Aishia Hamelech Yadeinu V'yayim Kadeinu Why you hold him away, sir? We seem to have a sign. We are a way in a deal. No, guys, I says, I wish I had in a cross. Everyone on, I am not in a lay no melancholy long by day. For a toady no, you'll hang no melancholy on by day, me, I did you do, you do, you do, you do, you do, I'm going to pour some wine over the fire. We made the bracha on. We take on behalf of everyone we, some blessings, wisdom in our pocket, parnasa, and long life, the coming of Mashiach, quickly in our days. We will. We'll make the, the blessing after the wine, and then we'll go to our weekly story uh, of uh, tzaddikim, of righteous people, to 
bring the blessing and miracles uh, into our life as we go into this new week. Baruch Ato Adinoi, Aleheinu Melech Oilam, Alegefer Al Priegefer. so, my dear friends, you know, one of the things, we, we, we just started the month of Adar, which is a joyous month because of the holiday of Purim. It's a joyous month because of the holiday of Purim. One of the things that happened on Purim was that when Haman, Haman gave out his decree that he's going to destroy all the Jews who in one day, Mordechai, who was the leader of the generation, woke up the Jewish people at that time to have stronger faith in Hashem. And though many of the Jews were slipping and moving away from observance in their newfound Persia, away from Israel, Mordechai was able to awaken their faith in Hashem, and therefore they uh, experienced the greatest miracle, their Savior in the story of Purim, which we're going to read in a little less than two weeks. So I want to share with you a story, and this is one of the reasons we tell the customers to tell a story on, on let's say, Shabbos Saturday night, of the Tzavim, of the miracles. I want to share a story that happened with the third Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Tzamech Tzedek Nach Mendel. This story goes back about 150 plus years ago. And in Russia, Western Russia, there's a city called Vitebsk, a big city. And that city had a big Jewish community. Many were followers of the Hasidic movement. Some were opposers to the Hasidic movement. Some were just neutral. <clears throat> and there was one fellow, one uh, family, who actually was related in some way to the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Lubavitch Rebbe, but they were not followers of the Hasidic movement. They weren't people who traveled to a Rebbe to get a blessing. But this man, the father of the household, uh, and the household went through a very difficult time. He had a good business, and one day the business just went kaput. He lost his entire business, <clears throat> and it was gone. Now he had a family to support, and he had no more business to help him support that family. And just around that time, a new dilemma hit the family. And that is that his daughter, his daughter who just got married not that long before, just a few years before, her husband disappeared. And in Jewish law, a woman cannot remarry unless she gets a divorce or her husband, God forbid, when he passes away. But here he disappeared and she was an aguna, which means she was stuck. So he was very depressed. It was very difficult. <laughs> and his wife, and his wife was encouraging him, yeah. please go visit the Tzemach Tzedek. Go visit the Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek. Many people go to him. He helps a lot of people, give a blessing, makes miracles uh, happen. Why don't you go to him? And, and, and many people prodded him to go, but he said, it's not me. I don't believe in these stuff. And they said, what do you got to lose? So, okay. He finally comes, makes the trip to Lubavitch. He comes to the city. He goes to the, the Rebbe's Gabbai secretary. He says, I'd like to meet with the Rebbe and the Yechidus in a private audience, and he says, uh, it's very busy. I have an appointment three weeks' time. He said, no, I can't wait three weeks. I have some very pressing issues. And by the way, I'm actually a relative of the Tzemach Tzedek of the Rebbe. He said, oh, a relative. They knew that the Rebbe was very fond of all of his relatives, those he knew, those he didn't know, and he always wanted to see them quickly. He said, if you're a relative, I'll get you in. Anyway, he gets him into the Tzemach Tzedek. It's Thursday night. He comes to Tzemach Tzedek and he says, Rebbe, you should know I'm a relative of yours from Bitebsk. And then the Rebbe starts asking him all about his family and some details where he comes from. And they have a little conversation. And before he even has a chance to ask anything of the Rebbe, the Rebbe says, you know, if you're family, I want you to spend Shabbat with us. Come tonight, uh, tomorrow night to our Shabbat table. And it was over. Didn't have a chance to ask the Rebbe anything. And uh, 
he finds himself Friday night by the Rebbe's table, the big family is there, he didn't find it the best time to talk about his issues, but he enjoyed the Shabbat meal, but now he needs to talk with the Rebbe about what he came for. So he goes back to the secretary, says, I got to see the Rebbe again quickly, and the secretary remembered his family, he arranged for him to see the Rebbe the next day. Goes into the Rebbe, and he tells him about his business. Tells him about his business problems. He lost his business, things are bad. He didn't even have a chance to tell the Rebbe about his daughter who became in a situation where she's chained and tied, meaning uh, figuratively, her husband ran away. But when he told the Rebbe about his loss of his business, the Rebbe says, you know, I saw an ad in those days in Russia. They had some kind of a way of communicating an ad that there's a, a German fellow who has a big factory in Kiev, Kiev, Ukraine. Um, and he's looking for a general manager. And perhaps you can go there and try out for the job. So he was thinking, and the Rebbe said, wished him well, and gave him a few dollars to pay for his trip to Kiev. He left the office, he was thinking, I ran a business, I was successful, I'm gonna go to Kiev to get a job. And this was an ad he saw a few months ago. Like, so he goes home, he tells his wife what the Rebbe said. He said, ah, this is not serious. His wife said, what do you mean it's not serious? If a Rebbe tells you to do something, but I think he's joking, take the blessing and run. So finally he was convinced by her and some of his friends. And he went to Kiev, he presented himself to this factory, to the German fellow. He says, you know, I do have a need for a job. And he gave him a pretty mediocre job. But at least he had a job. But before long, he was such a good worker that the, the owner noticed how good of a worker he was that he started to move him up the ladder. And, and in a short while, he became the general manager, making a nice living. So though he wasn't living at home, he used to go to home every few months, but he was sending money home. Now they, they were able to live back more comfortably. And he, was, he was starting to believe that maybe the Rebbe was a good idea that he came to Kiev. Then it was time for Pesach. He told his boss, listen, he has to go prepare for the holiday. And his boss said, you're, you're a good employee. You can take your time off and go for a few weeks to prepare and celebrate the holiday. You'll come back afterwards. And he goes home. He's not home for a few days, and he gets a, a very urgent message from the, the boss, the owner. He says, I need you back immediately. Something emergency came up. So he realized this is his livelihood. So he tells his wife, I have to go back, see what's going on. He goes back to Kiev. And his boss says, listen, I have a big birthday coming up in a few days. And I'm taking a big party with a lot of people, but I realize I have no one to organize the party. You're, you're the only one I know who knows how to organize something so well. I have a lot of trust in you. Please organize my party for me. And he did. He got right away to work and he organized the whole party from A to Z. And then it was a party that everybody, anyone who was anyone in the city of Kiev came and he was planning to have a priest who was going to come and give him a blessing, a benediction for, the, for his owner to, uh, on his birthday. Anyways, the party begins and everyone is coming in, the guests are coming in and uh, this Jew who's like the host, the party uh, is made for the, the owner, but he's the host. And all of a sudden, he notices that, uh, that one person who walked in, he, he recognized his face. Like, like he recognized, he, his face looks familiar. And he's thinking, he's not sure what it is. And he's thinking, and it's bothering him. So the owner sees him, he says, you look distraught. Something looks wrong. Is everything all right? What's going on? So he says, I think that priest looks exactly like my son-in-law. And he told him the whole story about his daughter and he lost his business and how he ended up in Kiev because of the Tzemach Sedek. That looks like my son-in-law. So the boss says, you think it's your son-in-law? He says, I think so. He says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. So he says, go wait in a room, in a private room. He told him in a private room, I'll be there in a few minutes with the priest. So the boss goes to the priest and he tells the priest, you don't have to talk to you something private. Come with me in a private room. The priest says, sure. And he comes into the room and the priest walks into the room and standing right near the door 
looking straight into his eyes, is this Jewish worker, his former father-in-law. His father-in-law, not former, his father-in-law. And his father-in-law looks him in the eye and says, how dare you run away, not giving my daughter a divorce, starts accusing him, you have to give her a divorce. And initially the priest says, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you are even. Where's this man come from? He tells the German owner, where's this man come from? What is he talking about? But the owner knew his new worker and trusted him. And he said, he took out his gun and he pointed it to the priest and he says, you have to be honest because if you're not telling the truth, I'm going to kill you right here. No one will ever know that I killed you. If the truth is you're a son-in-law, you have to confess now. And he broke down and he confessed that he really is a son-in-law. Somehow he got into his head to run away from Judaism. He left it all behind. He didn't even tell his wife. And this is where they are now. So the father-in-law said, I need you to give a get. I need to go bring you back to the city to take you to a rabbi, to witnesses or write a divorce. He says, no, 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 I can't do that, the priest says. If I get exposed, I'll lose my whole job. So the father said, don't worry, keep him here. He right away went into the city, got the rabbi, two witnesses, and his former his son-in-law, the owner, two Jewish witnesses, a rabbi, a scribe, the father-in-law quickly wrote up a divorce, which he allowed to do, and the two witnesses saw. He handed it to the father to give it to the daughter, and the father, uh, and he left. So here the father, the man realized that he thought that the Tzemach Tzedek sent him to Kiev to get a job. He realized he really sent him to Kiev because he felt that there was the way he'll, he'll be able to deal with his daughter's problems so she won't be chained and she'll be able to get married again. This is, comes from Amunat Tzadikim, believing in a Tzadik. When we believe, we get a blessing, obviously it's from the, the Torah, but through a Tzadik, through a righteous person. We got to have full faith. And when we have faith, the blessings materialize in the fullest way. So, so to all of us, as we're in the month of Adar, the Jews had great faith then. Things look bad. They look, some work, look worse than the pandemic. They were all going to be killed one day. But their faith came up and they didn't budge in their Judaism at all. And we see the miracle that happens. May Hashem help that during this time, we should have faith that Hashem is running the world and it's all going to be good. And specifically for this week, we should all have a week full of blessing and beautiful things. And for the entire month of Adar, we should have happy and blessings and parnasah and blessings in the family. And all those who need to get better should get better. And those who need to find their shidduch should get shidduch. Those who need to have children. Everyone should have all their blessings in the fullest and complete way. Like every week we'll finish singing Eliyahu Hanavi, song Eliyahu Hanavi to bring Eliyahu Hanavi should come back. By the way, whenever we do have the you can take out the paper we gave you after time, one of the taxes. It's all in here. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hatishbi Eliyahu 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 Agiladi Bimeira Yabo, you can just meet yourself and turn it. I know Imashi Yav and Bimeira Yabo. Yavo By the way, um, you know, sometimes when we feel bad, we live in a cold environment. You come Wednesday night to our journey around the world this Wednesday, 7.30 on this Zoom. We're going to be talking to and learning about the Jews in Alaska. <laughs> so uh, if you want to meet up someone who lives in a cold environment as well as us. A little colder than us. <laughs> a little more removed. Uh, they, it's going to be a great evening. And very soon is Purim. We have a lot of exciting things planned for Purim. We're going to have a big distribution of Shemishvat And on Friday, lots will happen in PMR. to Try to get the, at least to come out of your house. 
distance, but be able to hear the joy and share in it and receive Shalach Manot and we'll have readings in the Megillah in a safe way. So you're going to get everything in the email, but uh, let's make this Adar and, uh, and this month and Purim, despite all that we're experiencing, very joyous and beautiful and incredible, and, and, and this will help turn around because when we're joyous and happy, we bring around about the greatest salvation. So we love you all. Shavua Tov. So I want to welcome everyone who came on. Shavua Tov. For the first time, or it hasn't been on for a while. It's great Shavua to see Tov. you all. It's the best way to start the week. Shavua Tov. And we love you all. Shavua Tov. Be well, everybody. All the best. God bless. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. Great Rachel. seeing you on. Welcome. Good to see our neighbor. <laughs> Have a great one, everybody. <laughs> you all, Heather, it's so nice to see you and the kids. Yeah. Same here. Nice yeah. to see you. I haven't you in quite a while. Yeah. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov, Dina. Shavuot Tov, Rabbi. Lillian, David, and Sylvia, and Sylvia, and Robert, and Valerie. Hazak Baruch. For the Tehillim books, really, it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. That Amen. Read it to live is the best thing. Yeah. If you need more, uh, just call me, please. Okay. Yes. Thank thank you. You. Let's start reading it. <laughs> Ellie, every every day you should read the, the year of your age. All right. A guy like you is like 35 years old. You read 36. I need you to tell me which pages, sir, shall I read for my thing? So tell me. You can tell me now. You tell me privately how old you are, and I'll tell you exactly which chapter and page. I turned 71, Baruch Hashem. So oh, you you know you know, know that uh, you say numbers you say chapter seventy two you say chapter seventy two Ellie yeah seventy two is is the last it says that then Kalut Filot David Ben Yishai oh right chapter. amen yeah. okay okay chapter seventy two and I'll I'll send you the page later Great. thank we'll you love thank you, you. We love okay. you all. see you bye. Bye. See you.